Welcome back to Weatherbox. Today's April 1st. I thought I'd prank myself this year by coming to the beach to pretend like it's summer. And honestly, I wrote this as a joke, but it's kind of working. It's really nice out. You know the old saying, April showers bring May flowers? How true is that really? Does the amount of rain in April affect the quality of the flowers that bloom in May? Let's find out. Like many old sayings, the origin is a little unclear, but the oldest account in writing might be Thomas Tusser's 1557 poem, as shown here. At the time of writing, he was a poet and a farmer located in Suffolk, England, to the northeast of London. This area of the world is subject to a much more moderate climate than, say, someone living in Chicago. The temperature fluctuates from the low 40s in January to around the mid-70s in July. In April, the temperature on average is in the mid-50s, and they get about one inch of rain for the entire month. But April isn't even the rainiest month. That award goes to October, which receives about 1.5 inches. Across the United States, April is about the fifth wettest month, which means it's just about average. However, there is one word in this saying that's actually very significant, and a lot of people don't know it. That word is shower. <laughs> Rain showers and rain are actually two different things when it comes to forecasting. When the forecast calls for rain, it is usually a large swath of precipitation that exists on a boundary between two air masses, usually a warm front or a cold front. This rain usually lasts for hours and is accompanied by blanketing stratus clouds that stretch for hundreds of miles at times. The large area of precipitation is the result of large-scale ascent of air, which occurs ahead of the frontal boundary. Next time there's a front moving through your area, take a look at the forecast forecast, see if it calls for rain. Showers, on the other hand, are much more localized. They result from individual or clusters of cumulus clouds that rise, condense, rain themselves out, and dissipate. Showers can produce heavier rainfall, but for a much shorter time period and over a much smaller area. This radar image is an area of rain along a cold front, and this second radar image shows individual convective showers roaming the deep south. So back to the question, does April have more rain showers? Yes, absolutely it does, because the atmosphere is more unstable, allowing for convection, or the rising of cumulus clouds, to take place. Throughout the month, the jet stream continues to lift north, bringing in warmer air with it. Small kinks in the jet stream travel from west to east, amplify, and create areas of instability where the air is able to rise, producing showers and thunderstorms. Showers can also be created by the lake effect, which is when the warm water in the Great Lakes helps air to rise and condense, creating individual showers, I made an entire video on the lake effect. I'll put it right here. It's pretty cool, highly recommend it. There's still an issue though. Because of the highly localized nature of showers, it doesn't really boost April's average rainfall in either the UK or the US. But maybe it's not so much about the amount of rain, and more about the timing. Maybe flowers that bloom in May, also known as perennials, need an average amount of rainfall, but specifically in April, in order to grow. Most perennials have bulbs at their base, which is an underground storage structure that contains nutrients for the plant to survive the winter. It's really difficult to say what the most popular perennial in the US is, but at least for me here in Ohio, we see a lot of tulips, daffodils, and alliums. Most front lawns here have tulips, most public parks and backyards have wild alliums, and a lot of public spaces also have daffodils. And none of these really bloom in May. Daffodils are flowering right now, tulips usually the third week of April, alliums typically early June, maybe late May, I'll give you that one. Furthermore, because of the bulb's ability to store water and nutrients, as long as the winter had ample precipitation and around average temperatures, the amount of rain in April is probably not going to affect how well these flowers are going to bloom. It would take weeks, if not months, of extreme weather to kill off all the perennials, and too much rain in April could actually be a bad thing. It can cause disease in the bulbs themselves. So in conclusion, it is mainly the warmer temperatures that cause the flowers to bloom in spring. There have been quite a few accounts of an unusually warm February followed by a brutally cold March, resulting in the death of many perennials. And with our warming climate, perennials are actually blooming earlier. Researchers in the UK found that when comparing the flowering dates of 400 species between 1752 and 1986, the average flowering date was May 12th. But today, that date is actually April 16th. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Thank you guys for watching this video, and feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments below. I read all of your feedback. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.